I'm Amy Noel. Welcome to the Amy Noel on Dyslexia YouTube channel. This is Jefferson. Our video is on encouraging dyslexic children to read. My kids who read for fun, their reading level has gone way up really fast. A lot of experts say that it's important for children to read at least 20 minutes a day. That's for all readers. Now for dyslexic readers, I think it's very beneficial for them to get 20 to 40 minutes to read, but how do you get kids who struggle with reading to enjoy reading? I'm going to share what we've learned over the last 10 years of encouraging dyslexic children to read. So we have a scheduled reading time where in the evening before they can watch TV or play video games, we have like at least 20 minutes where everybody's in the living room and they're reading. This is when we're reading for fun. Because I'm homeschooling, I pull each of my kids into my room once a day in the morning and we do direct, explicit, structured literacy. But to really encourage them to read, I wanna have a reading time with them each day that's just for fun. We don't do reading time every single day without fail. We do it four to five days of the week on average. If I do anything 80% of the time, I say I do it. Some things go in cycles. Reading time is way easier to do in the winter when the sun goes down early. It's really important to make it positive. Number one, be happy. I make sure I take my anxiety herbs, which I'll put a link to in the description. You do whatever you have to do to be in a good state of mind. If you're not in a good state of mind, then don't do it that day or it'll just be negative. You can have snacks. A lot of times we do snacks for reading, huh, Jeff? Yep. Yeah, like cookies or those little pink wafers or marshmallows or chocolate chips. We've done a lot Rice of times. Rice Krispie Treats. Rice Krispie Treats, yeah. So a lot of times I'll do snacks. Or other times berries, like raspberries or blueberries. Incentives make reading time positive. So I'll say you guys read for 20 minutes and then you can watch TV or play video games or get a prize, like we have a prize system in place. Snuggling makes reading time fun, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can do all these things to make it positive. Never force your child to read, but you can make it to where it would be more unpleasant to not read. For example, if they know they're not gonna get to play video games or watch TV if they don't read, then they'll be like, oh, I don't wanna read, but I'd rather read so that I can play video games. So It's important to get books that appeal to your kids. Like Jeff said, he loves graphic novels. A lot of my kids like books about science, nature, animals. We have pigeons, so we looked up different books on pigeons and requested them from the library. The library's been a huge help with this. We go to the library often, and then my kids can pick out books that they like, and we can constantly be rotating the books so that they're getting new books all the time, and that keeps it interesting. And then they're actually, they want to read because they wanna see what's inside that book. If you can find a series that they get into, that really helps. Like Jeff got into the Dogman series, Keith got into the Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Once they get hooked in a series, then they'll read all the books from that series. It's important to provide books that are at your kid's reading level. I didn't explain this very well yesterday, so I'm gonna do it again today. Give them a Lexile test or a star reading test, something like that. And then once you have some kind of grade equivalent, you can go to the AR Book Finder website and you can search by reading level and interest level. And I'll show you how to do this. So first you go to the advanced search, you enter the interest level and the starting range for the reading level and the ending range for the reading level. So I have this set to 0.5 to second grade reading level. Then you get your search results. And I think this looks like a graphic novel that my sons might be interested in. So I click on it, and then I copy the title, and I paste the title into our library's website, and I place request. I really like our county library because you can request books from any of the libraries in the county. So you have a much wider selection of books, which is important when I'm trying to find high interest, low level reading books or specific books to meet my kids' interests. I have my bookshelf organized by reading level. And this is not to say that the kids have to read within their reading level. But when I'm having them read out loud to me, it's important that so that they don't get frustrated, the book needs to be at their level. When I bring the books home from the library, I try to put them in the, uh, organize them by reading level. If they don't fit with our other books that we own, then I put them up on top, kind of organized by graphic novels and kids books or nature books. 
for example. If your kids are just learning their letter sounds, have them read letter sounds to you for five minutes and then you can read to them. Or if they're at CBC Words, have them read a list of CBC Words to you for five minutes and then you read to them any book of their choice. When the kids needed preschool readers, I bought Bob books and I saved all the little books that they made at school from preschool to second grade. You can print them off the internet for yourself too. Make sure that you point to the words as you're reading so that their eyes learn to track. I have a whole video about that. Don't be too rigid about having your child read the whole book to you because a lot of times their executive functioning is low. I normally alternate every other page, so we take turns. I'll read a page, then they'll read a page, or I'll read a sentence, then they'll read a sentence. And I'm also flexible with the amount of time we read. Like I know 20 minutes is recommended, but sometimes we go a little shorter or a little longer depending on how everybody's feeling and how much we're enjoying it. And I'm also not too rigid about having them read every single word perfectly. When we're reading for fun during reading time, I let some things slide and I don't correct them every single time they make a mistake. Another thing that can help dyslexic kids want to read is to encourage them to read to an animal or like to their pet or to a stuffed animal. They can also film themselves reading for a YouTube channel or for their grandparents. They can call up their grandparents on the phone and read with them or do a Zoom chat. One of my sons loves to read to his dad and he really dislikes reading with me. Here's some tips for fitting in extra reading time outside of that 20 minutes of reading time. I always put the captions on all of our shows and our movies. So the words are always at the bottom of the screen. I play audiobooks while my kids are playing video games. I have them turn the volume down on their video game and I put on an audiobook. Or at bedtime or in the morning I can put on an audiobook. We listen to Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and the two main characters of that book are dyslexic and it mentions it several times in the book. Another tip is to look up books read aloud on YouTube. We've used this so many times when my kids need a little bit of extra TV time I need them to watch a little bit of TV, then I'll put on some books on YouTube. There's a lot of audiobooks on there that I'll use. For a long time, I had them read one book in the morning as part of their chores. Recently, I attached a hook to each of their beds and hung a little flashlight on it. And at night is when they get in a lot of extra reading time because they're only allowed to stay up if they're reading. And so I tell them you have to be on your bed and you can only read with a flashlight and you can't talk <laughs> and make noise. I don't know how much they obey that rule, but I know that they've done a lot of reading at night because when I say it's time for bed, they'll go to the bookshelf and choose whatever books they want to bring to their bed and then they'll read sometimes for hours. But right now that's just Michael Jefferson and Keith who are doing that reading at nighttime for fun. Uh, Daniel still only reads when I have reading time with him or when I read with him in my bedroom for our school time. And Jake Jacob just reads here and there at reading time. For Jacob right now, the main thing I'm doing is audiobooks and reading out loud to him. Him reading to me is so negative that there's not much I can do to motivate him. But the other day at the library, he decided to get a bunch of books and sit down and read them while he waited for his brothers. That doesn't happen all the time. I think with Jacob, the key is to keep it positive. Don't force it. So I just keep doing my part, doing what I can and not doing it out of fear. My grandfather, who is dyslexic, told me that he grew up in the woods in Louisiana and there were 10 people in his class and two of them were dyslexic. He didn't call it dyslexia. He didn't know it was dyslexia. He just said we were the dumbest in the class, which is sad, but that's what he thought. The way they taught reading just did not fit for him and one other girl. And he said he didn't learn to read until he was a teenager and there were these little books that were really popular among the teenagers that he wanted to read. And that's when he finally started reading. And then as an adult, his wife was laughing one day reading the Reader's Digest and she said, oh, you should read this, it's so funny. And he picked it up and read it, and then from then on, he would always read the Reader's Digest. Don't compromise your relationships or your peace for your goals. Putting a feeling of unity first helps us do things better so that it works for everyone involved. Jefferson, do you like reading? Mm-hmm. And what do you like to read? I like to read Dogman. Yeah. I made a whole video about Dogman books because they're so awesome. We just got the new one. And when do you normally read? Probably at night time when I'm on my bed. Yeah. Are there any other times you read? Probably like when I'm bored, I read a little bit. Mm -hmm. If the TV's off, you get bored enough to read. Mm -hmm. Do I ever make you read? No. No? Sometimes. When do I make you read? At reading time. Yeah. And when else? Mm, 
I don't know. Sometimes when we do school in the morning. Oh, like yeah. Reading, you're like, read. <laughs> that's when I we work together on yeah. reading. Oh, yeah. That's fun. You like that? What's fun about it? You. Oh, you're too sweet. Are you saying that just for the video? No. Okay. You're really sweet. And um, you're really fun to work with, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are there any books that you like other than Dogman books? Um... Probably like Captain Underpants or something. Mm-hmm. So do you like any books other than graphic novels or just graphic novels? Just graphic novels. I don't like the ones that are just no pictures, just like um, letters. Mm-hmm. Do the pictures have to be in color or mm-hmm. is it okay? If in color. In black, no black and white? No, only sometimes if it's like my favorite person. Oh, because you like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, huh? Yeah, that's why I read it, even though it's not in color. Yeah. If it was in color, I would read it all the time. Mm-hmm. But now I don't read it all the time. I would just read it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Best friends forever. <laughs> Please share in the comments any other things that have worked for you, any other ideas you have that helps make reading fun for dyslexic children.